Podcasting worldwide from Vancouver, Canada. Vancouver, Canada. Welcome back to the Personal Process Podcast. The show that takes you through the growth, hardship, self-discovery, lessons, and stories of individuals who achieved success in their own personal path. Trust the process. Welcome back to the Personal Process Podcast. Today, we are excited to have Nima Atar on our podcast. He is an owner of a financial firm. He has done some amazing things in his life. And, you know, I think his story speaks for itself. It is a testament to the personal process. We are looking forward to learning the life lessons that Nima has endured firsthand. And with that said, sir, is there anything that I missed that you would like to include? No, that's awesome. Thank you, Pam. And I got to say the introduction video is on point. I appreciate that, my that man. Thank awesome. you so much. So tell me, Nima, how did this entrepreneurial journey start for you? Well, growing up, I wanted to be a professional soccer player. Like that was my that was my main goal that I wanted to achieve is um, make it as a professional. And I think a lot of young kids probably want to become professional athletes. I was very set on it, though. It wasn't just something that I was saying that I wanted to do. I actually 100% believed it. And I think that was one of the that's one of the things that I had growing up that I think was unique is that I had this confidence in myself that I'm not sure where it originated from. Because I remember when I was a kid, you know, my parents would say, well, you know, it's one in a million to be a professional soccer player. And I was like maybe six or seven years old at this time. And I would say to them, I'd be like, you know, so you're telling me that 999,000 other kids aren't going to make it. Wow. That's really bad. That's what that really sucks for them. <laughs> and I mean, you, you you wouldn't expect a seven year old or eight year old to kind of respond that way, and I and and it never kind of put me off my path. You know, I never thought, oh well, people think that it's so hard. Maybe I shouldn't do it. I always just had this innate self confidence that I really don't know kind of where it came from or how it was there because you know, growing up, I had a lot of anxiety. I mm -hmm. went through a lot of you know mental health things that I'm sure a lot of other young individuals have gone through. I mean, some more severe than others, but. That was the one thing that I can always like look back to is that I always had that confidence and belief in myself. And um, growing up, I worked very hard to achieve that goal. I remember in the summers and the springs, you know, my parents would always go on vacation and they would always go travel other places. And I would actually stay back most of the time and I would stay back so I can go practice by myself. Wow. Right. Like in the summer, you know, my parents would go to a Europe trip and I would stay back and I would go to the soccer field every day for an hour and just practice by myself two hours. Um, and the whole point of that was to just keep improving and keep getting better. And no matter how many times, you know, I failed, I just always had this thing that if I work hard enough, I'll get there eventually. So I remember, um, even though I was very good compared to the other kids in my age, because of the amount of time I spent playing the game, I tried out for certain teams in the youth, in the youth programs and I wouldn't make it. And I didn't make it the first year. I didn't make it the second year, but I kept going back to the tryouts and it was never, I, the thought of not trying again, never passed through my head. I remember mm. um, after the second year of not making, so the first year, the reason I didn't make that youth team, and this was a U11, was because I didn't speak English that well. So when the coach would be like, hey, go to this position, I had always kind of played street soccer growing up, right? right. So playing like 11 versus 11 organized soccer was something that was new to me. So he's like, go play midfield, and I would go play forward because I didn't know the <laughs> positions. So the first year I got cut from the team, not because of a lack of skill, but because of a lack of understanding of the game. So he's like, go play like for a more you know lower level team, learn the, how the positions are and then come back and try it next year. And I scored like three goals a game at that level. And I learned the positions and I came back the next year. The next year, I didn't make it again. I don't remember specifically why I didn't make it that year. Maybe I was just not good enough or they weren't looking for it. And then the third year, I had such a good year, that second year in the different team and the coach was scouting. And he said, hey, make sure you come to the trial. And mm -hmm. I remember when he was telling me, make sure you come to the trial. I was like, you know, what, what makes you think I wasn't going to? That was what, because... <laughs> Because I guess in his head, he thought, well, he might not come back because he got cut twice. But for me, I was right. like, of course, I'm like, I'm going to keep coming back until you pick me. I'm like, eventually, you're just going to pick wow. me because you're like, this guy's just going to keep coming back. So that third year, I made the team and it kind of went from there. So those are just some, those are the few things that I can remember from my childhood is the competitiveness that I had, that self belief and that drive of like never giving up. And that all came before I kind of got on the path of learning about success and the mindset of success. And Although I got very good, I didn't become good enough to actually make it as a true professional soccer player. 
you know? Right. And I, and when I was 18, I realized that my development hadn't happened fast enough for me to get to where I wanted to get to. Because, you know, being a professional athlete, whatever sport it is, by the time you're 16, you have to be an outstanding talent. By the time you're 18, you have to already be in the prospects of getting into teams. Absolutely. Very rarely do you see someone kind of be in that okay to good level mm-hmm. and make it past the age of 22. So that's right. why when I was 18, I kind of looked back and the thought that went through my head wasn't that, oh, I was so stupid to think that I could make it. That never went to my head. The thing that went to my head was I should have worked harder. Right. Like I looked back and it wasn't as if like I, I said to myself, oh, you know what? I just couldn't make it. I was like, I could have made it if I had done more. Right. And I looked back and I was like, you know, I should have practiced more. I should have been more disciplined with this. I should have been more. And the reason that it didn't happen at the time, the reason I wasn't, it was because I was comparing my work ethic with the other kids on my team, hmm. not with the, everyone else in the world. And I think that's a common mistake that everyone makes is that who do you compare yourself to? So I would look around and I'd be like, well, all these other, you know, all of my soccer team members, they go home after practice ends. I stay 30 minutes after. I come 20 minutes earlier. I go practice by myself, you know, two, three times a week. And they don't even practice by themselves. Most of them don't even show up to practice. Even when I was playing at like the high performance leagues and stuff. And because I was comparing my work ethic to them, I thought I was doing good. But the reality is there's kids in Europe that are practicing, you know, six, seven hours a day since they're like six, seven years old. And I wasn't even, that wasn't even going through my head. Right. And when I was 18, I kind of sat there and I was like, you know what? I never want to have this feeling again, the feeling of regret. You know, I think one of the reasons why a lot of young people don't have success when they're young is because they haven't felt the pain of regret yet. Because the biggest gift that I had was I had a dream as a child that didn't come to fruition. So I had a wake up call. And the wake up call was, hey, no matter how much you believe in yourself, you know, this is the in the reality of things. If you're not doing everything you should be doing, you're not going to get there. Like this is not some fairy tale world. You know, we watch all these Disney movies and all this stuff and that there's always a happy ending. The reality of life is there isn't always a happy ending. You have to create that happy ending. And I, I look back and I was like, you know what? I will I will never allow myself to look back on something and wish I had done more. No matter what go I sub myself, I'm going to give it everything I have with all the knowledge and resources that I have in my hand. If it happens, amazing. If there is a chance that it doesn't happen, I'm going to have to look back and say, you know what, kid? You did everything you could with everything you had in your um, resources, in your mindset, in your knowledge. You did whatever you could at that time, and it just didn't work out. But if I can look back and give an inch of, oh, I should have done this, I wasn't going to be happy. So that failure actually was the springboard to create the person that I am becoming as we speak, right? right? So that happened. And then, you know, how it is with the Persian culture, it's, you know, you're either a doctor, doctor, lawyer, engineer, or homeless. And that's when your parents kick you out. Recently, real estate is also an option. They're like, you know what? We don't have to kick you out of become a real estate with the Vancouver market and everything. But the reality is, is that, you know, there's an expectation in our culture of, high level of education. And one of the things that I experienced growing up was I never really cared for school because I was so set on being a professional soccer player. I literally was like, why would I even need to get good grades? I'm going to be rich playing soccer. So who cares? That's how much belief I had in myself. Right. And because of that, I never paid much attention in school and I never really liked it. You know, I was, uh, I, it was hard for me to sit there and pay attention for six hours and everything like that. So because of those bad grades, people in my family, they kind of looked at me as like, oh, like I hope he makes it kind of thing because I was such a black sheep because everything people told me, I kind of did the opposite and I wasn't good at school. And obviously your parents, your uncles, your aunts, all these people think that, well, if they're not good at school, how are they going to become successful? So, so that's actually part of the, you know, a a lot of the, you know, mental health issues that came up for me later on was because of that, because I'm like, well, you know, you don't feel like you're worth anything when you're not getting those good grades because not that, not that my parents ever said anything to me. You know, my parents were very supportive of me. They were very loving, but it's just a feeling that you get from the people around you. Yeah. You know, your right. friends, your family members, you kind of get that feeling of like, 
they don't actually believe in me. They don't think much of me. Right. And because of that, I was always kind of actually looking for a route to success that would prove everyone wrong. Right. I, in, in a way, I actually didn't want to become successful through academics because I felt like that would give them more reason to believe what they believe. So mm. I took psychology in yep. CapU for one year just to kind of like go with the flow, sure. you know, satisfy my parents' expectation, make my friends think that I'm not going to be homeless, you know, whatever. And after one year of being there, I honestly looked around and I'm like, man, I don't like being here. I, I, I don't like coming here. None of, most of these kids don't know why they're here. Most of them are just here to be here. They don't actually have a goal that's attached to this. And I'm like, you know, I'm not paying for this because thankfully my parents were kind enough to pay for my schooling at the time. But I'm like, I'm, I'm putting my time into this thing. And am I really putting my time in the right thing? And I was going because I didn't know what else to do. And I was in this phase of my life where I didn't have a goal. And it was a phase that I was not used to because I, I always had a goal growing up of becoming a professional soccer player. Now at the age of 18, I'm kind of in this place where I'm lost, where I don't right. have a target to aim at. So one day I'm sitting in my room playing FIFA and I'm listening to an audio book by a guy named Brian Tracy. Right. It's called The Psychology of Sun by Brian Tracy. And the audiobook was introduced to me by a friend who was actually very successful at, at now as well. And, and he was at the gym and he just kind of like, he was like, hey, you know, do you ever listen to audiobooks? And I'm like, what the heck is an audiobook? He's like, <laughs> I, I, I'm not kidding, man. I was 19. I didn't even know what an audiobook was. The guy's For like, sure. well, the author like reads the book and you can listen to it. I'm like, then why do they make us read books in school? It was, it was such a, it was such a mind blowing thing for me. And you got to understand if you're always focused on just becoming a soccer player, you don't really look elsewhere. So I didn't know anything yep. about business at the time. I actually thought you had to have a business degree to even start a business. I didn't know you could get a business license. I thought you got, you had to like go through it. Cause I'm like, why would they have business courses if you don't have to pass them to start a business? Like that's how far behind I was in my mentality of that stuff. Yeah. And I'm listening to the audiobook, and the audiobook was like written in maybe 1980 or something. I think it was a, it was a very old audiobook, and I found it on YouTube. And he's like, 60% of entrepreneurs that are millionaires either never went to school or dropped out. And I'm like, wait, so you can actually be a successful entrepreneur without going to school? Like, this is crazy. And he's like, if you read an hour a day in your chosen field, you'll be an expert in three years and a world-renowned expert in seven years. So I go, wait, so one, I don't have to go to school to be successful. And two, I can just read books and get the knowledge that way. Wow. And then, and, and you know, here's the, here's another trick. And I feel like as I'm telling my story, I'm going to kind of share some of the lessons that I, that I, that I learned from it. Please. Le leaders make decisions quickly and they change them slow. And that's one of the most, that, that's the biggest commonality that I've seen in my life that whenever the minute I felt like something was right, I just made a decision to go forward with it. So right then I was like, this is the answer. Right at that moment, I made a decision. I'm dropping out of university and I'm going to read an hour a day and I'm going to be an entrepreneur. Wow. Okay. Hold up. I'm going to stop you right there, man. You, you just threw a whole bunch of knowledge, but I'm going to sit on this one point, man. Because let's go back to the whole Persian paradigm thing. And I'm going to kind of elaborate on it a little bit. First. Persian paradigm. For those who are a little <laughs> bit away from it. But, you know, like in the People Persian. Who are Persian. Persian. But I think a lot of cultures actually share that. You know, That's like true. it's not just Persian. I mean, we That's say Persians because we're Persian. But there's for sure. a lot of cultures that have that academic pressure on them. Yeah, for, sure. Ahead, for sure. And in, for these cultures that have that academic pressure, it's it's really real. You know, like. This doctor, lawyer, engineer, homeless thing, it, it's kind of like a meme. It's kind of like a joke when you say it and you're talking about it with friends. But, you know, there is actual judgment from your family members. Like, you know, the aunt would call your mom. Oh, what's this guy doing now? And it's just like, you know, you have that constant barraging and, you know, there's that comparing of children to one another. And that really leads to some unfortunate cases. And I mean, you were mentioning earlier about the harm that it did to your mental health. And, you know, it's something that's really... I guess cemented in our culture and I'm hoping something <laughs> some way it can change because I don't think it's very beneficial, especially in 2021 where the careers have just like evolved compared to what they were before when we were kids. But I want to talk to you specifically about dropping out of college when you just thought about it quickly and really didn't put any more thought into it. Like, how did you have that power with this whole knowledge of, you know, the history of being a Persian person with old it entails. Like, how did you do that? 
see, again, there, there's a part of this that I don't have. Th there's a lot of things in my life that I have developed in terms of characteristics and skill sets that I can root back to when it started. Hmm. And then there is some that I really don't know where it came from. But if you, right. if you listen to my story, my parents are telling me it's one in a million to be a professional soccer player. And my response to them as a six, seven-year-old kid is 999,000 kids aren't going to make it. And I'm not saying, okay, well, you're right. I won't be. I'm like, I'm still going to be a professional soccer player. Right. So a part of me always had this kind of picking my own direction and moving forward with it. Right. But I remember a specific thing that I said to myself when I made that decision. What do you say? Here's, here's, and you know what? I don't know how people are going to take this listening to it, but I believe this is, it's as real as it gets in terms of this is just how reality is. One day, my parents are going to pass away. Maybe I'll pass away before them. Maybe they pass away before me. Who knows what life's going to have? But one day, they're, they're going to be gone, right? right? The friends that I currently have, maybe my friends in the future, they may not be my friends in the future. The family members that I'm close with right now, I may be close with them in the future. I may not be close with the future. But the one person that has to wake up every morning and live with the decisions that I've made is me. And here's the thing. There is different ways of looking at life. Some people like to give away responsibility. Some people like to take responsibility. I'm not saying either is good or bad. But for me, I've built my life because I've always chosen to take responsibility. I know what I said to myself. What do you say? I said whether I win or lose in life. And when I say lose, I'm talking about like homeless on the side of the street. And when I say when I'm, and when I'm talking about like billionaire, whatever status. Sure. I want to be responsible for that result. Sure. I don't ever want to look back and say, because of my mom, I'm homeless. Right. Or because of my mom, I'm rich. Right. I want to take full responsibility for my decisions that I make in my life because I never want to be resentful. And the idea of me going down a route that somebody else laid for me in the hopes that it's where I want to end up was just a, was just a dice that I didn't want to roll. Wow. And, and here's the reality of it. Just back to the school thing. I think one of the biggest reasons why people are frustrated in life, one of the biggest reasons why people are unhappy is because they're trying to get somewhere with an outdated navigation system. Upgrade you know, when you have a navigation system, you got to update it. So it shows yep. you like when the roadblocks are. So it shows you like where like they have closures, where there is changes. And if, because, you know, roads change, they do construction. So if your navigation system is not updated, you might end up going the wrong way without realizing you're going the wrong way. Or you might go somewhere that will have like a block at the end of it. The reality of it is. What, the reason I say I look at the 95% and I do the opposite isn't because I think the 95% are bad. It's because I think most people never update their navigation system at a certain point. Let me use school as an example. Again, some people may like what I say here. They may dislike it. But this is how I think about it. Sure. There was a time 50, 60, 70 years ago where it was hard to get into universities. There was not as many of them around. So you needed either very good grades or you needed a lot of money to get it. Sure. So first and foremost, there was a level of scarcity to who could get in and who couldn't. The second thing was universities had information and knowledge to provide to young individuals that they could take and be an asset to a company that they were hired by. Because as a company owner, you're like, I need updated information on this thing that I'm doing. This university student that is about to graduate has the most updated knowledge in the world. So when you went to university and came out, there was many companies waiting for you to hire you because they wanted the knowledge and information that you had received that they were not given or they were not given in the same timeline. And then the Internet came and then Google came and knowledge and information in itself became obsolete. Yep. I'm, I'm very confident that I can go and get all the information that will be given to me in an MBA course through a university online. I um, haven't looked, so I'm not going to say I can guarantee find it, but I'm almost 99% sure that I can go and find that content somewhere on the internet and actually receive that information myself. And probably more concise and clearer too. So here is what I mean with the not updated navigation system. 
in our parents' time, when our parents were in their 20s and their 30s, all the people that made it, all the successful people were the ones that went to school. Not all of them. Obviously, there's, there's you know, outliers and such. But the majority of the people that got the jobs that they wanted to get and had the success, they, want, they had to go through university to get it. So our parents were brought up believing that they have to go to university and reality showed them that that was true. But then you look at where we are now. We're in a world where information and knowledge is no longer as valuable as it used to be. What's valuable now is somebody who can execute on that information and knowledge. The company structures have changed. The way people hire people, the way they keep them around. You don't have the guy that stays at a company for 40 years anymore. The average person nowadays changes their job or occupation every five to seven years. Right. So, so, so now you are making decisions for your life based on a navigation system that was last updated in 1995 or 2000. Well, you say, Nima, hold up. Are you saying that my parents are not smart? No, no, no. Your parents are very smart. But your parents love you too much to tell you what you necessarily need to hear versus what they believe will give you the most guarantees. So your parents think, how do I make sure my son is successful no matter what? Well, I knew that my success would have come from going through the school. So I can only give them that because what else would I tell them? What if they go become an entrepreneur and it doesn't work out? What if they go into this and it doesn't work out? So let me tell them the one thing that I believe is guaranteed so that they can actually get a result from and I think just before I let you go on, you said, I believe is guaranteed. That believe part is kind of critical to what you're mentioning. The, like results you mentioned- show, the results show that's not, that's not true anymore. 100%. And I, I, map. I am so um, sure that 10 years from now, 15 years from now, 20 years from now, universities are going to be in a lot of trouble if they don't change. You know why? Because I don't think our generation will pressure our kids to go through the university system the way we were pressured. You know why? Because we look around, we're like, hey, Tommy, I'm using random names here. Yeah, yeah. Tommy got a degree uh, at you know UBC, but he's working at Starbucks. Jordan yep. got a degree from SFU, but he's sitting at home and like painting stuff. Yep. So we have so many examples around us of people who did not achieve success through university that we kind of look at our kids and we're like, maybe they shouldn't go either. Exactly. Whereas, our, for, whereas for our parents, it was opposite. So one of the biggest mistakes that I think people make is they listen to people who they trust and not to people who have the results that they want. Powerful. Now people come back to me, they say, well, Nima, what if the person who has the results like lies to me and misguides me? Sure, that could be true, but I'm confident that if I talk to three or four people who are successful in the area that I want to be successful in, I'm smart enough to be able to pick the truths and the falsehoods from all those conversations and come to a conclusion that is more accurate than listening to someone that I trust who does not have knowledge in that area. Look, my mom, I trust her a lot. I trust her with with everything. But when I was a kid and I had a stomach ache and I told my mom my stomach hurts, she said, don't worry about it, just sleep it off, it's nothing. What if it was a tumor? She doesn't, she's not a doctor. She didn't have an ultrasound device to like check on me. It could have really been something serious. But because I trusted her, I went back to sleep and didn't think about it. I thank God it was nothing serious. But the reality is at some point in life, you got to be confident enough to listen to people who have the results without the fear of them, you know, lying to you or misguiding you or whatever it is that might might be holding you back from having that conversation or taking action on. Because the life is changing every single day and you have to go based on updated information to make the decisions for yourself not just based on what people are telling you who you love and trust. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's a that's a very critical point. And I, I guess I have one question for you, Nima. You know, like you're mentioning that you value the individuals who love you and care for you and give you this advice. But oftentimes you have to just go with the people that got the moves that actually got the status that you want to attain. But there's one critical element missing in this. And I think for a lot of people, this is an issue is when you say no to these individuals, it's kind of like an attack. It's kind of like a fight between you two. And they're like, you're, you're ruining your life. What are you doing? And you have that emotional investment in that relationship, whether it's with your parents, whether it's with like your best friend, 
How do you put that aside and go to what you believe is the right thing to do? Would you agree, Parham, that most people fall under the pressure of life? 100%. And it's not just to do with school, by the way. Sure. People, through peer pressure, end up doing drugs that maybe they shouldn't be doing. Sure. People, through peer pressure, end up getting to marry to people who they shouldn't maybe getting be getting sure. married to. People under peer pressure end up going to career options or education options that maybe shouldn't go. The reality mm -hmm. of life is we are social creatures. Mm -hmm. peer pressure and wanting to satisfy the individuals that are around us, the tribe that we're in is very real mm -hmm. because when you go back 2000 years ago, if the people in your tribe did not like you, you were not going to get food. You were not going to get protection. And you're on your own. You could literally die. Mm -hmm. So biologically, we have something in our brain that says, Make sure that people around you like you and make sure that they see you in good light. Sure. Well, that's, that's why people don't like rejection. That's why people don't like conflict. That's why people fall under peer pressure. Here's the thing, though. At the end of the day, no one said it's easy. Nothing in life worthwhile is easy. Getting a really nice body that you value based on what you believe is a nice body is not necessarily easy. Maybe you're too skinny. Maybe you're too overweight. Maybe whatever. Maybe, maybe you're even too, too, too muscular. Who knows what it is? Sure. Whatever the thing is, getting to the body type that you want means that you're not at the body type that you currently want. So you have to go through some hardship to get there. If you're not where you want, find where you want to be financially, same thing. So if you want to change your life for the better with change comes difficulty and comes the path of the most resistance and also getting out of your comfort zone for sure that's the reality of it so people are like well how could i say no to my parents what if they get mad at me what if they don't want to talk to me well look you got to ask yourself the question is me living the life that i want to live worth me going through that conflict or no and here's another question you know, there's two motivators, motivators that we can all go to. There's the dream and there is the fear. Yeah. So one side is, is it worth me having the life that I want to tell everyone around me? No, have them, you know, talk behind my back. By the way, I went through that whole thing. It was crazy. Like if I tell you, like when I decided to drop out, like I would literally be like walking down West Van and like my, my dad's friend would like stop their car next to me. Be like, Hey, can I, do you want to get in? Like, I want to like have a conversation. And they would. I had so many people try to talk me into going to school. I would go to family, friends' house, and people would look at me like I'm some disabled person. Like they right. would like look at me with that like feeling of sorry look. Oh my gosh, this poor kid doesn't know what he's doing with his life. He's dropping out. You know, they would get me to like be like, oh, why don't you talk to my son who's going to the UBC and let him guide you towards the path of like getting back into school. I had all those pressures coming at me consistently. How did you beat it? Because I kept, I kept thinking about where I'm going. I kept thinking about the destination. Mm. Okay. But also here's another thing I thought about. I'm like, what if I do what my parents, what all these people tell me to do, and I end up not being where I want to be, and I resent them for the rest of my life. The idea of resenting people was more fearful to me than the idea of disappointing them. Right. Because disappointment is their problem. Resentment is my problem. Yeah. Wow. If they want to be disappointed in me, no problem, dude. You, you, you carry that for the rest of your life and you walk around and saying that Nima's a failure. Congratulations. I'm going to live my life happily because I'm not even thinking about it. But if I'm resentful, I got to carry that with me every single day and I don't want to carry that. That's so huge. Wow. So that was the mentality that I, that, that I have with everything that I do in my life, by the way. Not just the school. The school thing is just one part. There's many decisions that I made in my life that many people didn't agree with. And thankfully, ended up being correct. But the, the reality of the situation is, is before you can make any decision, you have to figure out where you're going first. You know why people have so much conflict? Because they're constantly looking for the right transportation without knowing the destination. That's a very important point. 
most people are running around. They're like, they, they go to the airport and they're standing in front of the ticket, you know, the, the, to get the, the tickets and such. Yeah. And the person's like, well, where do you want to go? They're like, I don't know. You know, my mom told me that this plane is going to probably be a good one. So I'm going to get on that. While they're on that plane, somebody next to them says, hey, man, when this plane gets off, you know, make sure you get on that train. Why get on that train? Dude, I know this guy that got on the train and he's freaking killing it. And he's like, all right, well, he gets off and gets on the train. He's on the train. The guy's like, dude, this train is taking a long time to get me where I want to go. You sure it's the right way? No, man, I think you should take that car on the next stop. When you get off, there's a car. Take the car. That's going to get you. And people just keep changing the freaking transportation. And they never sit around and go, like, hold up. Where the heck am I even going? You know what's funny? People take so much time planning a trip. And that's why the trips always turn out so good. Hmm. They know exactly where they're going to go. They know what places they're going to visit on the trip. They know exactly how much money they need. They know exactly what the temperature is going to be. They check the weather, make sure they have the right clothes. And they come back from the trip and they're like, wow, what a great trip. Life is a trip that no one prepares for. Seriously, life is a trip that no one prepares for. You know, no one plans their life the way they plan a trip. That's the one thing I did. When I was 19, I sat down and wrote my goals, all of them, to the detail. And I wrote why I want to achieve them. And to this day, I am going from, that's my destination. Sure. At 19, I wrote, by the time I'm 27, I'm going to be making a million dollars a year. In September 2021, I'm going to hit that number where I'm making a million dollars a year. That's not an accident. That is a person that picked a destination and every decision I made my in my life was geared toward, is it going to get me there faster or not? And by the way, when you find a destination, it's a process of elimination. And the argument was no longer difficult for me. Right. Right? Because when people are like, go to school, I'm like, you want me to go to school for four years and only have three years to hit my goal? Yeah. No way. That, that doesn't make sense. It, that doesn't make sense. It's not going to get me to where I want to go. But I could make that argument because I knew where I was going. Very important. So the point. first thing people have to do is really sit down and be like, dude, what kind of life do I want to live? And it's okay to change it. It's not set in stone, Definitely. but at least have something to go on. Because if you don't, then what is anchoring all your decisions? That's it, right? For sure. And that's a huge point because if you don't know where you're going, which car are you going to pick? Which travel medium are you going to pick? What direction are you going to go to? How do you know so if you're going the right way? Exactly. And it's this is something that I think a lot of people don't know, especially at a young age. And I think, you know, going into university or college with zero thought of that and just gambling and hoping that it works, it's it's a pretty big investment individuals have to give up rather than spending time getting to know themselves, whether it's through, you know, travel, whether it's through conversations like we're having today. You know, you know what it's really through power home? Tell me. In my opinion. It's through thoughts. Thoughts. What do you mean by that? The, the, the most important part of our physical, you know, biological body is our brain, in my opinion. Yep. And most people don't even use it. Like, great. Read books. Watch YouTube videos. Listen to podcasts. Travel. All these things are, are a guide. Hmm. they're a guy that's all they are a book is a guy it says xyz is what you should do to succeed until you try that thing and see if it works for you it doesn't mean anything personal development is not reading books it's not listening to podcasts it's not you know it's not all these things all those are are a guy to help you think differently and look at life from a different perspective that's all they are hmm. but you have to be the one that sits there and actually thinks right And the problem is, is that when you think and make a decision from your thoughts, you are now responsible for the outcome of it. If you make a decision from what your parents told you, they're responsible. If you make a decision based on something that you heard on a podcast, that's responsible. So you have someone to blame. It's very scary for people to sit there and come up with something that they came up with. And here's the thing. You should use those guides before you start the thinking process because it will help you Get the right thoughts in place. Why did I choose to make a million dollars a year by 2021 when I was 19? I sat down and I honestly wrote out, I'm like, what kind of lifestyle do I want to live? What kind of cars do I want to drive? What kind of house do I want to live in? What kind of freedom do I want to have? 
And I added up the price tag for it, and it turned out to be around 80,000, 85,000 a month. Okay. And then I said to myself, well, what is it that I'm trying to accomplish in this world? And because of all the things that I went through growing up, I wanted to be that audiobook that changed my life. Wow. So I said, if I can get to a certain level of success where people are willing to listen to me, then I can impart what I've learned to them. And maybe I can change another 19 year old's life. Maybe I can change another 20 year old's life. Absolutely. So then I was like, I need a number that's going to catch eyes. So if I'm making a million dollars a year by 27, that's a pretty impressive accomplishment for most people. So now I'll have the podium to speak on. Maybe I don't need more than 300, 400,000 a year to live a comfortable life. But, but with that income, I'm still not going to be at the level I need to be to stand on that podium. Right. But at a million, the, the, it begins. So my big why, my big, you know, the, the, the title to my life is I'm looking to reach my full potential and in the process, inspire other people to do the same thing. Why? Because I think as human beings, we're here to evolve and help each other evolve. Definitely. That's why new athletes should be better than the old ones. If Lionel Messi stays the greatest player of all time for the next 40 years, then football has failed. Soccer has failed. Why? Because Lionel Messi should be a hallmark to inspire other young people to beat him. Because that's evolution. So yeah. records are meant to be broken. They're not meant to be kept. If records are kept, then we failed somewhere. Wow. So in my agency, I expect my agents to do better than I did, faster than I did. Why? Because if they're not, then I failed as a leader. Because if they learn from my experience, if they learn from my um, mistakes, then they shouldn't make them. And if they don't make them, they should go through this path way faster than I did. Elon Musk is very intelligent. He's amazing. I'm, I don't think he's the smartest ever. Elon Musk, though, had the advantage of learning from the mistakes of Einstein and the things that Einstein discovered and used that to make something even bigger. And all the other greats that came before them. So I don't know if Elon Musk has the highest IQ of all humans that have been around, but I know for a fact that he's been able to learn and take advantage of the people that came before him to help him create the things that he's creating and achieve the things he's achieving. Absolutely. And, you know, that's a, it's a very inspiring point, Nima, because, you know, a lot of leaders nowadays, they say like, you know, if you come from my position, like they're going to give you some sort of sanction to keep you down. But what you're saying is, hey, you know, come for the position, come better than me. I'm happy for you. And that means that I'm doing my job right. That's a very important point that I think if the world adopted as at large, man, we would be on Mars already. Eh? Um, I had one question for you, Nima, and I'm just cognizant on time because I know you're a busy man. And what I wanted to ask you is with our show being the personal process podcast, what I try to do is I try to flip failure and show it as a vital part in an individual's development. Can you tell me about one time in your life where a failure at the time was a pivotal point to catapult you to your success? And it's a big question. Every single part of my life that has turned into success began with failure. That's Boom. honestly, there's no, and I'm not just saying that as a soundbite. Literally, I, this is one of my favorite quotes. Success is going from failure to from failure to failure to failure without a loss of enthusiasm. You know, I always make this example. Maybe I'll make this my last point um, since we yeah. have to finish here soon. If you look at a one-year-old and compare them to, let's say, a five-year-old, the difference is, like, let's say a one-year-old child you compare where they're at compared to where they're at when they were five, the difference is insane. It's almost a completely different human being by the time they're five. By the time they're 10, it's the same thing. The difference in the five-year-old version and the 10-year-old version is completely different. The difference between the 10-year-old and the 15-year-old version is completely different. The difference between the 15-year-old to the 20-year-old version is a little bit different. It's different for sure, but it's not a lot different. The difference between the 20 and 25-year-old is a little bit different, but it's not a lot different. The difference between the 25 and 30-year-old, you can't really tell. The difference between 30 to 35-year-old, can't really tell. 35 to 40, can't really tell. Mm -hmm. 40 to 45, they've actually degenerated. 
Yeah. Now, now they're going backwards. If they're not keeping up with the inflation of growth, which will just keep them at that same level. So here's the question. What happened after the age of 15? We stopped failing. Somebody told us you're not allowed to fail anymore. Somebody said, hey, sit in the classroom and keep taking information. Make sure you study because if you get the wrong answer, if you get the wrong answer, you're going to fail. And if you fail, you're going to be embarrassed. You're not going to go into the next grade. You're not going to go do this. Hey, don't raise your hand if you don't know the answer because if you say the wrong one, everyone in the class is going to make fun of you. Boom. Somewhere someone told us that you're not allowed to make mistakes anymore. But everything we learned growing up was through mistakes. I don't know anyone that got up. I don't know anyone that sat there and was like, mom, I want to walk. But before I do, can I have a four-year course on walking? (laughs) This is going to be our soundbite. I'd love to talk. Can I please, um, can someone tell me exactly what I should say so I don't say the wrong thing so people don't make fun of me? Wow. Everything we achieved growing up happened through failure after failure after failure after failure. I I have a video of me trying to walk when I was a kid. I fell like 10 times before I even took a couple of steps. Biking was the same thing. Talking was the same thing. So at somewhere in our life, we got programmed to think that you shouldn't fail. And when we got programmed to think that way, we stopped failing. And by stopping to fail, we stopped growing. And by stopping to grow, we became unhappy. We became frustrated and we became stalled in our life. And resentful so, in a way too. Yeah. Yeah. You know why we're resentful? Because human beings are happiest when they're growing in whatever area. Man, that was that was such a good answer, man. I'm telling you, that was I just enjoyed that whole time. And Thank you, you know. Appreciate it. You know, I'm actually very sad that we have to depart here because I feel like we just we just scratched the tip of the iceberg with the knowledge and the lessons that you have, Nima. But you are a busy man, and I don't want to take away from any more time of your success. But I really appreciate all the lessons that you gave us, the stories. And I think it's a testament to trust your process in life and go chase failures because that's where the true lessons in life are and that's how you're going to find yourself find your passion find your strengths and find your future so with that said Nima thank you for coming on and just to close up I just want to ask you for your shout outs you can shout out anything you like from your business to your social handles and after I'm going to ask for your one message to the audience before we go on to our outro Um, you guys can follow me first of all Paham thank you so much for having me on I really enjoyed this conversation I'm sure one day you're going to have an insanely huge podcast with millions of viewers. And, and at that point, we're going to have to like ask you for your time to bring us on and sponsor oh, you and do that stuff. But not at all. thank you so much for having me on. Um, my Instagram handle is Nima, double underscore, Atar. Um, maybe you can leave it in a link or somewhere on the page so people can find it. That's the best place to kind of reach out to me or see me or um, – Uh, be in touch with me because Instagram obviously is the easiest place because we get to see each other's pictures and get to communicate more effectively. But other than that, you know, I'm happy that I could share some of my perspectives on life with you guys. If it helps you amazing. Um, If not, then I hope it was just a different way for you to see how other people can view life and live it. Absolutely. And what about contacting you for business purposes? Who can contact you? And through Instagram is awesome. If you want, um, if you want any guidance in terms of bettering your financial future, whether that's learning more about investments, learning more about tax strategies, learning more about, you know, um, financial planning and insurances and everything to do with that. We have an amazing education program to help people with to do that. So if you want to learn more about that, feel free to reach out to me on Instagram. And I or one of my agents will be more than happy to sit down with you and go over that information. If you are looking for um, another opportunity in your life to grow faster, to develop yourself and earn more income, that's also something that we can talk about because we're always expanding and looking for more agents to help us share this great information with other people. Fantastic. And Nima, just before we hit our outro quickly, um, what is your one message to the audience? And again, it can be from this podcast or anything that's on your mind. Honestly, that's really hard because I mean, it's, it's hard to give just one message, but I think the theme of our conversation was fail your way to success. And honestly, don't be afraid of what people say or think on your way there. Everyone is a critic until they become a fan. Boom. And and that is something that I can 100% attest to because, I mean, I didn't talk about it too much today, but 
my process to where I am today was insane amount of failure, criticism, and people really hating on me for a long time. And now I'm at a point where, you know, thankfully we're making a lot of strides and I'm having a lot of success. And now all those people that were once critical of me and making fun of me are now cheering for me and saying how great I am and how great I'm, I'm doing things. So as long as you stick to the journey, eventually you'll get the recognition that you're looking for. But you have to go through the time without it. And that time is building you building you up to be the person you need to be to handle the success that's going to come with your path. So failure rate to success and don't want to be afraid to go a different path than what people are telling you to go. Boom. I love it, Nima. Yeah. And again, thank you again for coming on, my friend. We wish you the best and hopefully we'll have you on again. Thank you so much, Panham. I really appreciate it. Hope you have a great rest of your day, okay? You too. And to the listeners of the Personal Process Podcast, thank you for joining in again on another episode. And we hope you got the amazing value that I did. Cheers. Hey, everyone. Parham back after another amazing episode with another amazing guest. We hope we added value into your life so you could take the tips from this episode and fuel your process forward. If you enjoyed our episode today and think other friends or family members may also appreciate the lessons that our podcast brings, be sure to share us with them subscribe and rate our show so we know how we did and always remember trust the process